Hi, I'm Amy, a Gates Fluid Power Specialist, and today I'm going to show you just how easy it is to upgrade a Legacy Gates PC707 to a GC20 crimper with Gates Cortex Intelligence. When I first heard that Gates was upgrading the PC707, I was surprised. So I know what you're thinking, why upgrade? But I think you're going to enjoy the new features in the GC20 Cortex crimper. It has integrated crimp specs, it has auto calibration, training videos, a task light, ergonomic handle, and the list goes on. So let's jump in so you can take advantage of all of these features. Plan about 30 to 45 minutes to complete this upgrade. Also, before you start, be sure you have the following tools and put on your safety glasses. After a task is explained, pause the video while you complete that task. Then, start the video when you're ready to move on. You'll begin by disconnecting the pump and power for safety. Flip the pump switch to off and disconnect the pump from the wall outlet. Then, disconnect the pump from the crimper switch box. Next, you're going to remove the switch box. First, disconnect the gray cable by gently twisting the connector counterclockwise. Then, remove the two bolts holding it to the base plate of the crimper. Depending on your PC707 model, this may be located on the top or side of the base plate. Next, you'll need to remove the shroud. You'll be reusing the shroud later, so take care during this step. Start by removing the two Allen bolts from the front. Check for zip ties. Remove the shroud from the crimper, and then remove the digital display. Depending on your PC707 model, you may need to pop off the red screen and remove two screws. Or, on a different model, you might simply release the clips from the back of the shroud. Once you withdraw the display unit, keep the shroud close by as you'll reinstall that later. If you still have the foam block that was supporting the shroud, set that aside as well. Next, you'll remove the actuator rod by unbolting it from the channel. There are several ways to remove, but we recommend loosening the nut on the bottom of the channel, likely using a 3 quarter inch wrench. Once loosened, you'll unscrew the nut on the top of the channel to finish unbolting it. After removing the actuator rod, you'll disconnect the pressure line from the back of the crimper. You'll be reconnecting the pressure line in a later step, so again, use caution during this step. Rags and a basin are handy for catching any fluid leakage. You will likely need a 7 8 inch wrench to disconnect the pressure line. With that same wrench, also remove the swivel fitting from the top plate. Now that the components are removed, you can begin to assemble your new GC20 with Gates Cortex Intelligence. You'll begin by installing the pre-assembled solenoid block at the rear of the crimper. First, separate the loosely connected adapters between the T-adapter and the solenoid. You may need to remove the support bracket for clearance. Then install the T-adapter to the top plate and orient so the bottom of the T is facing down. Tighten. Next, reconnect the adapter from port 2 on the solenoid to the bottom of the T-adapter. Orient the solenoid so the adapter in port 1 is parallel to the back of the crimper and tighten the connection between the T-adapter. Reinstall the support bracket. Next, you'll install the return line. It's easiest if you make the connection at the pump first, then follow with the connection to the solenoid. Depending on the model of the pump, the return line connection location may vary. For the most common pump, the drain port is the lowest port on the back side of the pump. To avoid leaking hydraulic fluid, you can roll the pump on its side while you make this connection. Remove the current hardware on the drain port, likely using an Allen wrench. Insert the drain line adapter, tighten, and connect the hose assembly to the adapter and tighten. Then connect the other end of the return line to port 1 on the solenoid assembly and tighten. If you rotated your pump during the installation, return it to its upright position. Lastly, connect the pressure line to the adapter on the back of the T-adapter and tighten. 
Now we're going to install the distance sensor. This is the trickiest part of this conversion. So once you complete this step, you're more than 50% done. As you're standing in front of the crimper, you will be installing this distance sensor on the back left tie rod. Start by loosely attaching the hose clamp near the top of the tie rod. Orient the sensor so that the body of the sensor is parallel to the crimper tie rod. When securing the clamp, we recommend that you pinch the clamp and hold your finger over the nut on the attachment end to keep the nut square with the screw. Then hand tighten to avoid cross threading. Once you have the thread started, tighten down the clamp just enough to hold the sensor in place. You'll go back and finish tightening the sensor in a minute. Now you'll install the bottom of the sensor assembly to the channel using the same hole that previously attached the actuator rod. Line up the L bracket on the sensor assembly under the channel so that it sits flush against both the back and bottom of the channel. Use the bolt provided to go through the top of the channel and the opening in the bracket. Attach with the washer, lock washer, and hex nut. Tighten firmly. It's important that the L bracket remain flush with the channel, so double check before moving on to the next step. Now let's move back to the top of the sensor assembly. Move the hose clamp so that the body of the sensor is approximately an eighth of an inch above the lip of the channel. This must be done before finalizing the positioning and fully tightening the clamp. Once you have the distance correct, double check that the body of the sensor is parallel to the crimper tie rod. This distance and orientation is important. Once the sensor is positioned an eighth of an inch above the lip of the channel and parallel with the tie rod, you can then tighten the clamp. If the sensor is not installed correctly, the crimper won't operate, or you'll get an error during the setup calibration process. In either situation, come back to this step and verify the installation of the sensor. Now you'll move on to reinstalling the shroud and attaching the electrical housing. Locate the hardware for the electrical housing and begin by installing the two threaded studs into the existing holes in the front of the top plate. Hand tighten securely. Replace the shroud by lining up the two holes with the newly inserted threaded studs. These studs will loosely hold the shroud in place while you install the electrical housing. Feed the four wires on the electrical housing through the opening in the shroud that used to hold the digital display and pull through so that they are hanging out the back of the crimper. Although this step can be done with one person, it's easier with two, so you might want to pause this video now and find a helper. Align the two cutouts on the electrical housing with the two threaded studs and push the electrical housing gently into place. Be sure that the four wires are pulled all the way through the shroud so that they aren't pinched by the electrical housing. If you still have it, you can insert the foam support block under the shroud. Ensure that the green grounding wire goes over the left threaded stud. Add the washer and nuts on each of the threaded studs and hand tighten. Then follow up with a 7 16th deep socket to fully tighten. The last step of the mechanical installation is to connect the four cords at the back of the crimper. Connect the solenoid cord to the solenoid at the rear of the crimper. The orientation doesn't matter. Next, connect the cable on the sensor to the matching connector. Connect the pump power cable and the pump power cord in an outlet and turn the pump switch to on. Lastly, connect the final cord into a power outlet. The power light on the faceplate should illuminate. Apply the provided glass screen protector and case to the tablet. Power the tablet on and dock it into the crimper. Dock the crimper with the magnetic charge port inserted first. Connect the tablet to your Wi-Fi network, open the Gates Cortex crimp app, and follow the on-screen prompts for the tablet setup. You'll need to perform the setup calibration, which might take two or three calibration crimps with an 8G coupling, so have a few nearby. After you complete the setup calibration, you are ready to use your brand new GC20 with Gates Cortex Intelligence. 
I hope you enjoy using your upgraded GC20 Cortex crimper. If you have any issues, please reference the operations manual and tutorials located on the Gates Cortex crimp app in the Knowledge Center. If you have any further questions, contact our team of application engineers and they'll be happy to help. Thank you for watching.